Right. All right. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Right Brain Warm Up. Uh, this week we have three awesome guests who are creative people who have changed what they did creatively in their careers and we'll hopefully hear from them on um, how perhaps you can move careers and you don't just have to be stuck doing the same thing for the rest of your life once you choose something when you're 18. So we have three awesome people on. We have Jason Hines, Jay Hines up the top there if you're watching. Then we've got Siobhan Fitzgerald below and then we've got Dave Gibson uh, just to the other side there. So I might first start with a little intro about Dave. So Dave Gibson is the co-founder of Hawks Brewing Co, a highly awarded independently owned beer company created in conjunction with former Australian Prime Minister, the Honourable Bob Hawke. Prior to founding Hawks Brewing Co, Dave was a highly awarded creative director at Adweek's agency of the decade, Drinker 5 New York. Thanks for coming on, Dave. Thank you for having me. And next is Siobhan Fitzgerald. Siobhan is co-founder and chief creative officer of Good Sex Story site, thegoodbits.com, a former advertising creative director and writer published across industry and mainstream platforms. Siobhan is also founder of the advertising industry's creative journal, gabberish.com. Very busy. Thanks for joining, Siobhan. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Alex. And finally, we have Jay Hines. Jay is a commercial photographer and National Photographic Portrait Prize finalist. Before transitioning to photography, Jay spent over a decade as a senior art director at leading ad agencies. And from 2010 to 2012, he co-headed Melbourne's prestigious award school. Thanks for coming on, Jay. Good, mate. It's great to be here. Brilliant. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this question that I've been asking everyone who's come on, and that is, um, what is creativity to you? We might start with you, Jay. Um, okay. Um, uh, it may sound a little bit odd, but um, uh, creativity to me is like this little pulse in here and in here, and um, it's like a little friend that I have. Um, it's kind of always there. And... Um, I suppose like, it brings me like um, a sense of hope. I know it sounds weird, and um, but also like um, a sense of oh, drive almost, you know. Um, um, I just like the fact that, you know, I don't know why, but like, it's in me. And um, I like the fact that um, if I go out and shoot, um, I can go out for, I don't know, six hours, and then um, I get to come back right with something which I never had or um, I could sit down like to write something. And um, I kind of like the fact that um, I can go into this area in my brain right or heart or wherever it is. And um, I just um, I just have to be there with it. And then at the end, I get something brand new out of it. It might be really good, it might be really crap. I don't know, but um, yeah, I love that. Um, so yeah, but then I think also um, um, on like quite a larger sort of scale, um, um, I think uh, it's more of like what a powerful sort of thought. Um, I always like the fact that um, a person I can sit down um, and write a song right, or hear like a riff or um, some sort of lyric in their head um, and then after that um, I actually play the song, sell the song um, and then do like a live show, um, sell tickets to it um, and people actually leave their house um, and they go off to like at a club right or wherever um, and they might go out for like a meal first or like at a meal later um, yeah and you know it, you know it's gone from like a little song right, or a little lyric or a thought or a riff right, and someone's head into something that, you know that's you know like a giant thing um, and yeah I just think that's awesome I like that coming from something small in your head and just yeah. exploding out into all these different things it's really interesting a way of looking at it Siobhan yeah. what about for you yeah, it's funny. As a creative person, I've never actually thought about this question before. So I, I, when I thought about it, I really broke it down and tried to think about what it was to me. And of course, there are all the creative things that you can do, but quite literally that idea of to create something and it's that urge to do something. And that is what creativity is for me. And just a driving need to put something out there into the world in, in some way or another. Um, so yeah, when I was little, when I was a kid, that meant for me, I was, I, I love to draw and I love to write, I love to sing as well, all of these things. Um, and as I've grown up uh, now, I guess it's to put ideas out into the world and I don't really sing anymore, but <laughs> using my other skills that I've sort of created over the years. I sing to my kids a lot, actually, that's all I, Puff the Magic Dragon I've got now. Um, but, but for the rest of it, it's really about um, using the skills that I gained in those years to um, yeah, to get ideas out there into the world. And that's what, yeah, 
that's what I love about it. And that's what it is to me. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's that creating something, both sort of saying similar things, getting it out into the world is a really big thing. And Dave, what about what's creativity to you? Mate, um, creativity, I sort of see creativity as problem solving. Um, and, and I think for me, because I've gone from a, an, an advertising career into a sort of a business career, I'm always using creativity now to solve problems and just think about things, whether it's laterally or differently or, or whatever. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's sort of interesting to me. And, and I sort of want, and a former ECD of mine, a while back um, used to say for every unique problem, there's a unique solution. And that would always quite stuck with me. And I thought, well, no matter whether you're trying to sell a product to someone, you're trying to change an attitude um, of, of someone, or you're telling a story, you're really um, always trying to solve a problem in my mind. So I think creativity is, is at its core um, problem solving. And then how you sort of execute that is you can do that obviously in a, in a myriad of different ways. And why did you, Dave, first get into a creative field, like when you started in advertising? What draw, drew you towards doing something like that for a living? Um, it's a good question, mate. I, 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 think, I think I was always um, into uh, the creative side of things and I guess the right side of the brain more than, than the other side of the brain, to be honest with you. And um, was, you know, I loved art at school. I always used to draw when I was younger. And I think... Um, you know, something, as Jay said, something just drew, drew me to it. And I, and, and I sort of got into it that way and, and um, sort of studied design and then really loved ideas. So just sort of followed, followed that. Yeah. And Siobhan, is there a similar tailor for you? Like you seemed to be saying a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, I suppose so. I always knew I was going to get into a creative field sort of growing up and I came from a very academic family and mm. I, uh, how, did that, that they, how did that, how did that feel when you're in academic uh, and you're going, hey, going creative here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't that I was unacademic, exactly. It was just that my mother always sort of encouraged that. Well, she saw the creative side of me and it, it just became a part of my identity early on through, I guess I was always drawing or writing and she sort of encouraged that in me, which isn't to say, like my sister is a brilliant creative person as well um, but she is more academic than I am as well so she focused on that whereas for me it was always a thing where I was able to a, a creative career just looked like the um, the obvious place to go to um, as to f figuring out how to do it like that was really hard and I, I said I used to sing so my first degree was actually I didn't finish it because it was in music and I went actually do you know what this is fun but I'm not that good at it um, and so I bummed around for a few years and then my mum sat me to just big big role in my life my mum and sat me down and said Borny that's my nickname um, you need to earn money because you're not very good with money and I thought about it and I looked at all the courses that were available and the advertising degree at RMIT was the only thing that allowed me to write and draw at the same time. So I was like, mm. great, I can put off making a decision about which way to go and um, fell into sort of writing at the end of that. But it's interesting, like doing the good bits as I do now, um, my design and my, my art and drawing skills have really sort of come back um, and I really enjoy being able to sort of dabble in that part of it. You get a bit siloed, don't you? In, in advertising and just careers um so it's nice to be able to do your own thing and just do whatever you you want and be your own boss yeah i feel like that's what i like about creativity is that you can pull all sorts of skills together you're not just doing numbers all the time you're taking bits and bits like a little bower bird aren't you taking things from different spots yeah that's it and i think it's interesting as well like the way we all responded to we had slightly different answers but what is creativity to us is sort of problem solving and putting things out there into the world and it's a very creative industries type of I like music's like that as well I guess art if you have exhibitions but I know for a lot of other people creativity is a lot more insular whereas I think for me and maybe for some of you guys as well it's like hey look what I've done <laughs> look what problem I've solved want to get in on it like want to does this resonate with you you spend so long having your work sort of rejected in advertising jobs that you want to just finally like get something out there into the world that really works and, and have that um, yeah, resonate with people in the world. And Jay, so yeah, that sort of communication is, is really important as well. Yeah, absolutely. And Jay, is it a, is it a similar tale for you of why you got into creativity? And maybe then also you say, uh, it was interesting Siobhan saying how 
uh, and creativity in advertising. You get so many ideas and a lot of them don't go anywhere. And you made the switch to becoming a photographer. Was that a reason, was that a reason why you decided to become a photographer? Because you have a bit more control perhaps? Um, uh, so back to the first question, um, mine right is kind of similar. I don't think that I, um, I don't want to sound all airy fairy, but um, I didn't really choose it either. It's just sort of something, you know, I don't know, I don't know why, I just, I don't know, I liked it. I used to love, um, I don't know, I used to have like what a room, you know, it was covered right in posters. I just loved, I loved that sort of stuff. And um, so, yeah, and then, you know, when I was 18 and um, I kind of worked out right, um, 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 I could try to work in a certain field where I just get to make stuff up. Um, I just thought, yeah, I'd love to do that. But it took me about another uh, seven years, I think, after that, like to act, I should get in. But um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure why. I just love it. Um, uh, and answer to your second question. Sorry, mate. I forgot what it was. Oh, why did you decide what? to change from advertising to become a photographer? Um... Um, I've been in advertising for 13 years and um, I certainly didn't hate it. Um, um, uh, I just sort of got to the point where um, I'm actually sitting down with, I've got a blank sheet of paper. It was a bit of a task for me. And um, yeah, I would just shoot all the time. You know, um, I would kind of leave work and, you know, um, I'd go off right and shoot. And um, it just sort of got to a point where um, 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 I thought, listen, you know, um, I could keep on doing this, you know, if I've got a side project. And um, I just thought, um, you know, I'm going to be 60 one day. And, um, you know, I'm going to talk to someone about shots of mine back in 2000, or 2008 right, and what happened to them. And I just thought, um, I don't want to be that person, you know. So, um, I don't know. I just really loved it and thought, oh, damn it, I'm just going to go for it. So, um, it took me oh, two or three years, I reckon. But... Um, um, I was going to say this later, but um, uh, I'll keep going now, is that um, uh, it was early January in 2013 and um, I was cooking a meal and it was just me. And, um, yeah, I kind of got angry and just thought, oh, mate, you're so weak. You know, like, um, you know, it's been two years at least and I thought, God damn, I'm just going to do it. So, um, and then I, um, I was quite calm about it. I saved up for six months and I just left. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I thought, okay, I'll do it. I thought it'll work out. So uh, I don't know whether I was, I don't know whether I was brave or dumb, but. It sounds like both of your answers are, I don't know why, I just had to, which is probably the best way to do <laughs> things, you know? It's in the yeah. heart, you know? I had yeah. no other choice. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. yeah. And Dave, so you made a big change from being like one of the one of the top agencies in the world to going. I'm going to start a beer company with Bob Hawke. <laughs> it's quite a change. How did you decide to make that? And why, as well? Mate, there were two. I think there were two key things that led me to to sort of do it, um, to take the leap. And the first was, um, I'd been in. I think I'd been in advertising around the same time. Jay, I was. It was a 13 or 14 years, and. Um, I, I liked it. Don't get me wrong. And it was in a great agency with great people and we we're doing great work. And the first I was on just doing this shoot and it was a great, great commercial. We were a series of commercials we we're doing. And, um, the, um, the, the, uh, the director turned to me on set the first day and he was, he was amazing director is Oscar nominated guy. And, and, um, I was really excited to be working with him. He just turns to me and says, um, I did a bit of research on the client last night and um, I wasn't, were you aware that these guys are the, the, the people that trash the planet the most out of any other client in the United States? Yeah, wow. <laughs> and, oh, oh, it, it hit me at that time and I went, well, no, I, I didn't, wasn't a, that aware of it. And, and from then on, something just started not mm. sitting right with my values. And um, I think, look, don't get me wrong. Advertising is amazing, but I think, I think a lot of people also, um, need to uh, if they're working and they're giving their creativity to, to other people's sort of companies and brands, I think that it's got to start aligning with their values. Um, and it, and I, and they were, it was obviously not aligning with mine. So that sort of, that was the start of it. And then not long, much longer later, it was, um, we're working the weekend um, as of course you do uh, in advertising, as you guys would well know. And um, 
it was snowing outside and, and I think we were, I was working with my rider, Nathan, and we were missing home like crazy. And it was obviously summer back here. And Nathan turns to me and says, if you're back home right now, who'd you most want to have a beer with? And I said, Bob Hawke. And he said he was thinking Bob Hawke too. And anyway, we, we got talking about Bob and what a legend we thought he was, etc. And then we worked out, we knew someone that knew him. So he thought, look, let's just put a proposal together and see if he wants to, one, have a beer and two, start a beer company. Um, so we sent an email off and we sent the email off and then we made a pact together. We said, if, if he gets back to us, no matter what he says, we're going to chuck, we're going to throw it all in and do it. And three days later, he got back to us um, via this other guy and said, um, oh, boys, I'm, I'm uh, not sure about setting up a beer company. I'm 86, but if you're ever back in Australia... Um, let's go for a beer. So, of course, we took that as yes. And um, yeah. that was the moment where we quit our jobs and took off. That's that big, hairy, audacious moment. I just love it. It's like, who would want to have yeah, a beer with? So great. Bloody crazy at yeah. the time. But, um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And Siobhan, how about you? Because you're doing all sorts of different things on the internet now. What's made you do, to, do <laughs> that, to, do, uh, to do other things beside advertising, I guess? Mm. Well, I mean, my first side hustle, I guess, uh, Gabberish. Um, well, I get it, it comes back to that need to express, doesn't it? Uh, so that was, uh, I was having a bit of a tough time. Um, I was quite stressed and I thought I wanted to express that creatively. Um, and so I created a platform, um, creative, it's creative therapy for creative minds to put that out there in the world and found that that really resonated with a lot of people in our industry. We talked about insecurity and rejection and all of these other things and people drew about it and wrote about it and sang about it and it's still sort of going today. I've, a lot of other people edit it at the moment um, and I sort of chat to them about it but that I guess getting that started just made me realise that my thoughts could resonate uh, and that I, I was talking before about having a lot of work rejected and everyone in advertising does but it can get you down after a while and I guess it was getting me down and I thought well this thing outside in the world that sort of resonated with everyone I, I started to believe in myself and what I could do from there I guess um, and I last year I was on maternity leave for almost the whole year with my second child Madeline and um, again head out of the advertising space but still with the creative skills that I have. And I came up against a problem um, that a lot of women do post children, which is that I was suffering from low desire, which is, you know, super common. 40% of women have it. Uh, um, and I, I was reading this book last night, um, Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. And I came across this saucy paragraph and I was like, oh, hello. Hello, there's something like <laughs> awake there that I didn't, I didn't know it existed in me anymore. And I was like, this would be really cool if it was... Uh, like an app that could be sent out to women, like with just a little saucy paragraph or, or a few pages, like it could come from books, like it's be beautifully written. And then I was like, no, no, it's about sex. No, I can't do that. No, 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 no. Uh, and so I like, I'm not like, my friends have always thought that I'm a prude and now I have a sex site. So I don't know, that, uh, <laughs> but you know, but I, I had come to believe in, in the power of my ideas, I guess. And I spoke to a few girlfriends about it. And then I, I finally spoke to a girlfriend who is also a brilliant businesswoman and has worked in startups before and um, I don't know how who knows how to do the business side of things and she was like that is a great idea and we paired up and started working on that and I guess the rest of my story is that it was a side hustle until two weeks ago and I was working um, as an associate creative director uh, but two weeks ago I was made redundant so <clears throat> after having I knew it was coming I hadn't worked in a while and, you know, the whole world's sort of falling apart at the moment. But after having a little cry and uh, eating some leftover Easter eggs, I went on <laughs> to LinkedIn and I changed my, my job title, title from uh, ACD to uh, co-founder and CCO of the Good Bits. And, and, and here we are. And it's been really great because now I can talk about it openly and I don't blush that much about it anymore. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and yeah, that's where we are today. So sorry, long winded story. No, no, it's great. I think it's you know, both having, having a big change like that. It's just so awesome. And I can just see like in all three of you, the happiness that you now have. Now you've got a bigger goal than just serving other people's clients and needs. You've got something yeah. for your soul. Is that fair? Similar That's thing right. with similar thing with you, mm. Jay? Yeah. 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 I'm not really sure what to say, but um, well, how's life different always, because you've made the change, I guess, compared to where you were before. 
Um, uh, I think right with work-wise, um, uh, I learned really early on that um, um, it's not my concept anymore. Whereas, mm. whereas like for years and years, right, it was mine. And um, whereas now um, I'm there, I'm there like to help. Um, I always got taught right that everyone in the line, you know, if, um, if you get someone to do like write a voiceover, everyone should add fifteen uh, percent. You know, I I got taught that you know back in 2001 and so um i see that now um, um is a key part so um i just tried like, to lift it um and to make it actually come to life um, um so yeah um it's kind of different with that but also um i like the fact that um, um i kind of get where they are you know um i know what it's like to be on a shoot um and be under pressure from I quite a suit or like what a client who says, um, I need X, Y, and Z. So um, I think that, you know, um, um, I think actually having that, um, it makes me like a better shooter because, you know, I, I realise, you know, if I've got to shoot on those six more frames, sure, I can do it, you know, whereas um, I always found that on shoots, you know, um, there'd be some sort of tension with the person. And I think, dude, I just need to like to shoot X and Y again, you know, so, um, uh, uh, so that part of it, but, um, also, um, uh, uh, I kind of find up with the hours, you know, I'm not, I'm not in there at work on my seven days a week or being on like a pitch all night, which, you know, I'm sure always happened to all of us. Um, so now, um, you know, um, um, I probably work a quarter of the hours really. Um, you know, I'd like to be working more, but um, uh, uh, so that. But also, um, a key thing for me in the last couple of years, I used to get, um, I'd get like the Sunday night blues. You know, all of us, right? I've kind of been there, but now I never ever have that anymore. I've never had it in seven years. That's gone, and so um, I find that like quite a really really powerful thing now. That you know, um, I don't ever go to bed on a night. And like on a Sunday night or, you know, think, oh shit, I'm going to work tomorrow. I'm always like, awesome. Awesome what I'm shooting tomorrow. So um, I think like to leave that behind, um, yeah, it feels pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome. And Dave, how are you going? Because you have you've gone from a high stress, high pressure a creative director role to, I imagine it's quite stressful trying to set up a brewery when you've got a, a guy named Bob Hawk said, let's have a beer and hasn't actually committed to doing a brewery with you. So turning that around to where you are now, how does that feel? Yeah, mate, it's, 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 a, I don't know. It, it's sort of gone from one quite highly pressured thing to another. And I think that the, the pressure is high because we literally didn't know anything about brewing or business or anything. So it was a crash course in, in, in brewing, but you sort of in, sorry, in business, but you, you put up with it because I think it's your own thing. Um, I think we were getting tired as well of like um, the point about obviously all these ideas dying. I think there's so many brilliant people in advertising that have so many brilliant ideas that die every mm -hmm. single day. And I, I think you do get to a point, I've got friends currently in advertising that are at this point where you just go, you know what, enough's enough. Um, I, I think, you know, I think people do get to a point where they want to use their creativity for their own thing. But um. So that's good in the sense that it's the, our own thing, but yeah, it's, it's, we are learning. We've made some pretty huge mistakes and, um, but we learn from them and we're, and we're getting better, but the, you know, it's totally different to, to advertising um, in the sense that, you know, we're negotiating, looking for com commercial leases and, and all this, all other stuff. I think Nathan and I th thought we'd be sitting around all day writing beer ads, but it's just not, it's actually not, it's the total opposite to that. Um, that, in fact, that's the stuff that's actually getting neglected because we've had to um, uh, focus on the, the business side of things. Um, but I will say that I think that advertising actually gives you a very good grounding in business. Um, mm -hmm. And again, getting back to that problem solving thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, but I think the, the difference is, to be honest, you, advertising is, is quite a cushy job in the sense that you are surrounded by other amazing people that can help you get to it, whether it be in ECDs or whether it be other creatives or photographers or directors or that all bring that 15% um, um, that Jay was talking about. So doing your own thing, it's 
you know, it's obviously the buck stops with you, which is, which is both exciting and extremely scary, but it, it's, it's a relief that, and look, if you're working till two in the morning, you know, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for, for other people. Mm. And I think that's, um, that sort of drives you, drives you forward. I find like that thing about learning as well. Like when you've done a job for 10, 15 years, maybe you're not learning as much as you can, but when if you change things completely, you're going to start learning and finding out new things about yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Do you feel the same way, Siobhan, about what you're doing now? Like you said, you're quite a prude uh, and now you've got a sex site. So it's, it's a correct learning curve. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. It has been. It's been a huge learning curve. And partly, um, yeah, to Dave's point, like the business side of things has been a huge learning for me. So uh, we're still a startup, the good bits. Like we've, we only launched a couple of months ago. We're not making money yet. Um, but we have a solid business base and having as a creative person, bringing on someone who knows about business is really helpful. I highly recommend it um, because we've got a plan and I hope it works out. Um, but, but yeah, I, and I'm, but I need to learn about all of that myself. So I've listened to a lot of podcasts and, um, and that sort of thing. And I guess, yeah, it's, I, I, I love it. Like, you know, Jay had to save for six months. I, I got a redundancy package and I'm basically looking at that as a, like a grant um, to, yeah. to have my own startup um, and to, to put into that for the next, six, I probably won't get another sort of advertising job in the next six months, for instance. I'm like, I don't even have to stress about that. This is my time to work on this. Can we make it work? You know, I really, I really hope so. The thing that I find hard and that I'm trying to work on right now is just the emotional roller coaster on it of it. So you're so invested in it if it's your own business. Uh, in advertising, I was so invested. Like when it's your idea, I'm sure we're all the same. Like you love it, it's your baby, and then it dies a million times and a thousand deaths. Um, but this one is even more so, and there's so many things to wrangle. And um, and the thing I'm trying to work on at the moment is, yeah, sort of that adrenaline rush followed by the flatness. So when things are going well versus when things are sort of uh, plateauing or something hasn't worked out, how you um, think. So what's been really good about that is that I've started running, which I haven't done since before I was pregnant with my sec uh, Maddie, my second baby. So, you know, get, get that, uh, um, those endorphins and work off some of that stress. Um, but I think my next step, which everyone talks about is mindfulness, which I don't practice at all and which I need to, um, because otherwise, yeah, it's, it's fun. And the emotional roller coaster can be really thrilling as well, but the flat days are hard. Um, so I'm just trying to get into a bit of a routine. I'm only two weeks into it though. So talk to me again in a couple of months and see where I'm at. Uh, we'll talk to you when you're uh, listed on the stock exchange with the biggest uh, the bits has gone bananas. Uh, so what I thought <laughs> yeah. has been good about hearing you guys is I think why I wanted to get you on because you were clearly people who didn't want to lie on your deathbed and go, God damn it, why didn't I do photography, Jay, something with your literature, Siobhan, and having a beer with that, with a Bob <laughs> Hawk. So that's why I've got a question this week from uh, the Right Brain Workout. It's actually written by Luke. Uh, Luke Thompson, who is a creative director at Clemenger BBDO. And his question is, uh, was, think of the funniest thing you could say or do on your deathbed. So, Jay, we might start with, we might start with you, if that's okay. Okay, so mine is, um, um, I'll see you real soon. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of, uh, what was his name? Spike Milligans. I told you I was sick. <laughs> Uh, Siobhan, what's your, what's your, what was the funniest thing you could say or do on your deathbed? Look, I have to say I found this really hard because all I can do is envisage everybody devastated and crying around me. So to move past that into something funny is really hard. But I thought, I thought what it really needs is some comic timing um, and, and you wait till the very last moment and then say, darling, I've been waiting my whole life to tell you. <laughs> 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 that's too sad they're no, too sad brilliant. i can't this one's too hard oh no that's great i think it's brilliant dave what's, <laughs> what's yours i think i'd just be pre i'd pretend to be dead and then wake up and, <laughs> and, then, die. and then die and then die yeah that's, good. I that's like, great i, I love, like it i love yeah, that it's brilliant <laughs> all right well i might just I end up the on the light i saw the light <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh that's gone that's black all again dark, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, i might just end with the last uh, question so to, I might start with you, Siobhan. How can people use creativity to improve their day-to-day -day life now and perhaps also in the future? Mm. Um, yeah, that's funny because I can't imagine life without creativity. So 
what what I was really thinking about was now when we're all stuck at home. Um, if creativity is doing things and the urge to do things, then that can be as basic as making a cake, doing the you know doing the the gardening, or what's been been bringing me a lot of joy recently is just like literally rearranging the living room putting new pictures on the wall whatever it is to change the space around you because otherwise it gets really boring um and into the future oh god I mean you've just got to find it's about finding what you love doing isn't it really my my best friend over in London considers herself a non-creative person and she's a bit of a party animal and she had her first baby last year and she was pregnant. She couldn't, she couldn't drink. So she had to find something to do. So she started this like uh, girl band that does covers wearing velour track suits and <laughs> picked up the trumpet that she hadn't played since she was like 19 years old. And they were they're terrible and awesome at the same time. So yeah, it's finding something that's really fun and you don't have to be great about it. Great at it. It's just, uh, yeah, it's doing something that's enjoyable for you. That's awesome. I love it. Jay, what about you? <laughs> Um, a similar sort of thing. I think um, I know that during now, like you know, over the past what's it been, you know, six or seven weeks. Um, um, I think using it to break up the day. So um, I don't know. Um, I've cleaned out. I haven't. Um, I didn't do that. That was my wife who did that. Um, I cleaned the backyard, <laughs> but um, but we've cleaned out. Oh, tons of stuff but now right with cooking every night right we cook stuff right, which we'd never actually cook before I was always just like let's just get like um, a piece of salmon you know um, and just have that for dinner whereas now like we're cooking a bunch of different stuff every night so um, yeah I think um, I think that right now uh, it's a good way just to break up the day um, but I think overall in like you know in quite a worldly sense um, 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 I think people, um, it's good to use it because I don't think there's like a right or like a, um, like a wrong sort of way or, you know, um, a wrong sort of outcome with it. And I just think with life, like there's so many rules about, I don't know, how to be like quite a good parent or, um, you know, if you get hassled from like quite a boss at work, like to do it this way, right, or do it that way. I think with this, like there's no kind of wrong answer to it. And um, I think, um, yeah, um, um, it's a beautiful sort of side to it. So, you know, you could write a song, it might be really shit or, you know, you could draw a picture, who cares? Um, so, yeah, I just think that um, it would get people out of the mindset of um, all of, all of um, like, like the pressure on us, whether, you know, as I said, like to be fit right or look a certain way or be a good parent or, you know, or son or daughter or whatever. So, yeah. Kind of giving you a bit more freedom, isn't that creativity? Yeah. Hmm. No. Dave, how do you reckon people could use creativity in their day to day life? Um, mate, I think uh, as proven with what's going on right now, everyone's sort of having to create their own entertainment. I think um, creativity has been a great way for people with kids or people by themselves. There's a lot of creativity out there at the moment. In um, I saw a thing the other day called I think ISO Fest. It was called, which was like a mini trop fest for people inside shooting these little movies mm. um and we had a friend's birthday that we needed to do something for so i ended up playing freddie mercury in a queen um video uh, i want to break free with my kids and wife which is funny which is never going to see the light of day i can assure my friends <laughs> um but i think so i think that's great but i i think on a larger scale i think um creativity and if you look at yeah, obviously um, what was going on with climate change before all the COVID-19 stuff happened, which was the other huge thing this year. I think, um, you know, creativity and purpose is what really um, would be really encouraging for me to see. So, so people looking at what can be done, um, how to use creativity to, to, to change what's going on in the world um, as well. And that can be done daily. It can be done weekly. It can be done monthly. Um, I think that's really exciting. There, uh, there's, a friend of mine just last year released this idea, which I think is a brilliant example of what I was saying about creativity and purpose. Um, it's a sunglasses brand called Good Citizens and he basically changes one plastic bottle into one pair of sunglasses. Um, he's worked out that one bottle does that. And so he's, and he's also taking it all out of the sea as well. And I just, I thought that idea was amazing and that, that ideas is, like that awesome. really, really excite me. So, um, more of that stuff, I think, is would be on a daily yeah. basis would be great. 
Yeah, I love that idea. It's so great. Uh, I've loved he- talking to all three of you. I think it's very inspiring to show people who are perhaps listening that you're never too old. You can teach a, an old dog new tricks. Don't <laughs> lie. Don't lie on your deathbed and go. I shoulda, woulda, coulda. Go and do it. All these guys have done it. I think that's awesome. It's really inspiring. So hopefully everyone at home has got uh, love, loving to see what this creativity can do to the world. Um, so I'll sign off for now. And, and as I always say, when in doubt, turn to your right side. Have a good one. <laughs> that was awesome, guys.